Hey everyone, welcome to the second part of the energy unit review. This is going to be focusing on the greenhouse effect and the three forms of heat transfer. So here we go. The first form of heat transfer is called conduction, and I gave you a little bit of a uh, cheat sheet on the top here. Conduction works best in solids. It works best by uh, when the molecules make contact with each other, and metals are the best conductors of heat. So if you look at my little example here, we have a solid metal bar, and there's molecules inside the bar, and essentially the first molecule gets heated up, and it passes this energy onto the next one, and onto the next one, it's like a chain reaction. But this can only happen in solids. And you can see the first part of the bar heats up first, and then the second, and then the third. Convection is when you have heat transfer through a liquid or a gas, and the key factor here is it has to do with density differences. So I put this little cheat sheet in blue for you. You gotta know this blue sentence here. If you increase the heat of something, the molecules move further apart, which means the molecules are less packed, which means the density is less, which means the, the substance will start to rise. And this is apparent right here. If I put an X at this picture right here, the outer core is hot, it heats up, the, the materials become uh, further apart, which is less packed, which means it's less dense, which means it rises. And then as it moves away from that heat source right here, remember energy travels from the source right here to the sink, which is where it's going. As it moves away from the source, it gets cooler, which means the opposite happens. Decrease heat, molecules are closer together, which is more packed, which means it's more dense, which means it'll sink and it sinks back down to the source and then it, the cycle repeats. So this is called a convection current. And the last type is radiation. The only things to know about radiation is heat transfer through empty space. It requires no medium or substance. If you didn't know what medium means, it means substance. To travel through. So the example is, uh, the main example is light of any sort is radiation. Or you could say anything moving through space, so sunlight through space reaching Earth, that is also a good example. The next thing is insulators. Insulators are really bad at conducting heat. They're good at not letting it get in or out. So I just put a couple examples here of good insulators. We use them to make sure heat doesn't escape or heat doesn't get in. The next thing is greenhouse gases. There are a bunch of different greenhouse gases, but for your sake, you only got to really know three. The three that you got to know are carbon dioxide, methane, and water vapor. I will give an honorable mention to ozone over here. Ozone does help to trap heat, but it also protects us from UV ultraviolet rays. And our ozone is located in the stratosphere. That was from the Describing Earth unit. Um, but the one thing to know about greenhouse gases besides number one, number two, and number three, you're going to have to remember the top three. They trap and absorb heat. And another word for heat is infrared. So greenhouse gases are good because in the atmosphere, we have them and they keep our heat in. So then at nighttime, when the sun goes away, it's still pretty warm out. We could survive. However, too much of them is not so good because if you add more greenhouse gases to the atmosphere, we're going to trap too much heat, which is going to make temperature go up too high. So I'm going to give you the little quick rundown of the greenhouse effect. So here's the greenhouse effect. The sun right here gives off shortwave visible light and it hits the ground. So this is incoming because it's coming into the earth. Short wave, visible light. And what happens is it hits the ground and it's absorbed and it's re-radiated, meaning it's spit back out as infrared, which is heat. So this is gonna be longer wave infrared. We call this ray outgoing, terrestrial because it's coming from the ground, infrared because it's heat, 
radiation. Because infrared is a type of radiation. We talked about that in the last video. So this outgoing terrestrial infrared radiation get, ends up getting trapped by greenhouse gases, which are in our atmosphere. And they can't get out. So they're trapped in our atmosphere, which makes the temperature in here stay up. Now, some of it does get out and go back into space, and that's fine, which is good. We don't want all of it to get trapped. We just want enough that we sustain our current living situation right now. So that's the idea. Incoming shortwave visible light hits the ground, gets absorbed, and re-radiated as outgoing terrestrial infrared radiation, which gets trapped. Now, the reason it's called the greenhouse effect is because a greenhouse which is normally housing tropical plants of some sort. You put plants in this greenhouse and essentially what happens is the sun here has, the, it's the same exact concept. This is clear glass in a greenhouse. It's just made of glass and the short wave visible light comes into the greenhouse and then it's transformed into long wave infrared but the long wave infrared cannot get back out through the glass which means it gets really hot in greenhouses, which allow plants that normally require hotter temperatures than whatever is outside to be able to thrive in there. So we use it to grow plants that need warmer heat. So the, the analogy is the same exact thing for greenhouses, uh, for the greenhouse effect. It's the same exact thing. That's why it's called the greenhouse effect. All right. Here's a little image I found that I liked, I thought was good. There's your incoming solar radiation, and it is transformed into that outgoing terrestrial heat, which is then trapped in our atmosphere because of the greenhouse gases. If there was no greenhouse gases in the atmosphere, there would be no way to trap the heat. And there is, so that is good. All right, here we go. Let's see what you know. Number one. Arrows in the diagram show the three method of energy transfer. Which one correctly identifies them? The answer to this should be the heat is transferring through the solid right here, the liquid in here. So since this is the solid, this is conduction. The liquid, this is convection. And then it's going out into space, empty space here. So this is radiation. So it should be... A, uh, B is conduction, so this is wrong, this is wrong, and this is wrong, so there you go, B. Number two, when a heat source loses energy, that energy is, heat always moves from source to sink. So the sink gets the heat from the source. So the answer is D. Number three, diagram below shows temperature values at various points. Towards which point will the heat flow from point P right here? Where is that heat going to flow towards? Hopefully you picked A. Everything always goes from source to sink or hot to cold. So the only one that's colder than 10 is five. So your heat's gonna go here. Number four, Diagram below shows a solid iron bar that is being heated in a flame. Which heat transfer is the solid iron bar going to be going through? The answer is B, conduction, because that happens in solids. Number five. Diagram below shows a lab box used to demonstrate convection. The diagram that shows the arrows uh, are located over here. Which arrows are correct? Well, you could get rid of some of these. If you have a burning candle, the, the air is going to go up off the burning candle, definitely. So I can get rid of D, because that shows it going down, and I could get rid of C, that shows it going down. Since it's going up off the burning candle, it's then the cool air is going to be out here, and it's going to come back down, make our convection current. So A is the best answer. Number six, you can read the top. Most of the energy from the light sources, 
there's your keyword light, was transferred to the sand by the process of, if you remember, light is radiation, C. Number eight, in addition to CO2, two other major greenhouse gases in the atmosphere are what? Remember the top three? Carbon dioxide, methane, water vapor. D. Number seven, sorry those were out of order. Which diagram shows how air inside a greenhouse warms as a result of energy from the sun? So we drew a picture of this. B shows nothing getting in. This is wrong. D shows nothing gets trapped. This is wrong. Now these two, this one here shows nothing gets trapped either, so this is automatically wrong. But the idea is you want short wave in, long wave trapped. So in this one, has this is long wave in, so this is wrong. So the answer is C. See, short wave in, long wave gets trapped. C. Number nine, evidence supports the idea that increases in carbon dioxide, remember this is a greenhouse gas, and if you remember from the beginning, greenhouse gases have one function. They absorb or trap heat. So greenhouse uh, carbon dioxide and methane in Earth's atmosphere are major contributors to global warming. This is based primarily on the fact that CO2 and methane are excellent absorbers of, we said it, absorbers of heat. So you just had to remember which one of these four things means heat. D, infrared means heat. That's your answer. Number 10. For weeks after a series of major volcanic eruptions, Earth's air temperatures are often what? Okay, so imagine this. You ready? You're out here. Hopefully not. There's a volcano that erupts. Here's the sun. The volcano erupts. All this smoke goes into the air. Guess what? Now the sunlight is not going to be able to get down to the earth because it's going to be blocked by all this smoke. So the temperature is going to go down so we can get rid of A and B. And then it asks about transparency. Transparency, if something is transparent, that means it's able to be seen through. You could see through it. And if all this soot and dirt and volcanic ash is in the way, the transparency is going to go down. You're not going to be able to see as well. Just imagine if you were in a house full of smoke, you're not going to be able to see as well as if there was no smoke. So it's going to be cooler because the ash and dust decrease the transparency. It makes it harder to see. Number 11, ozone layer. Two things about the ozone layer that should, actually three things you should know. Number one, it's a greenhouse gas. It traps heat. Number two, it's in the stratosphere. And number three, it protects us by absorbing harmful UV radiation, which gives us sunburn. C. All right, that is your quick and easy version of the energy unit. Hope it was helpful. Good luck in earth science, and I will see you on the next video.